How are you? I'm Ezra. This is Coffee and Song. I usually do this at uh, early in the morning. Tonight, I just did it at night. And I only have my coffee, but I like the title, so let's keep it. I'm going to share with y'all today a song I wrote for my wife when we got engaged and talk about the best advice I ever got uh, on marriage. And it was the best for my marriage. Maybe it won't mean anything to you, but I'm going to share it and, and maybe it'll mean something. Maybe it'll help you where you are. Um, now, I have to jump back a little bit, as usual, to give a little context about my marriage. Now, you could say I'm a, a marriage expert because I have 30 years married now. I've, I have put in 30 years <laughs> close to it. Well, I think I'm a few years, maybe a year shy or two years shy, but it, but it was with two different women. So I don't know. I don't know if I'll get my expert status, but with that in mind, do take whatever I say with a grain of salt. It's not like I figured it all out, but I got some really good advice one time about our marriage. And what's funny is me and my wife made it through things that, that you just, you know, marriages just don't make it through like divorce you don't usually make it through <laughs> divorce we did uh we we made it through some huge things and then we're back together and it's like our, our love was reborn and we're, we're trying to learn to live again together and that's where we had a threat uh, that was not like these big things in fact it's, it's funny that the the big things when i look back in a sense they happen in events and it, it draws out of you all, you know, all that you, all the resources inside of you. But this, this little thing that was attacking our marriage when we got back together was not one of these big things. In fact, it's, it was just a little mundane, it's petty. And, you know, and in fact, it's, it's a little embarrassing to talk about how petty I was during this time. And it has to do with money. And, but, you know, this is like real marriage, like really, it's these little it's not these big things. It, well, it could be. But on the, the scale of everything, marriage uh, falls apart because it just, you didn't win the battles every day, you know? And it was one of those things. And it was a resentment about money. And I had good reason. You know, when we got back together, I was trying to start my music career again. <laughs> it always makes me laugh because I was 40 years old. But I was trying to make, and I was making uh, most of my living off of music. And when my family came back and when my wife came back, this was no longer possible. This came became very hard. You know, I could no longer just eat ramen noodles every night. I had to actually think about, you know, other things and, and money. I couldn't let the electricity go off if I didn't need it that week. <laughs> Got that kind of stuff. And so I started building resentment because I didn't get to live life the way I wanted anymore. And it was all centered around money. And I had this mentor at the time, a spiritual mentor, I'll call him. And I would go to him and, and it, this, these little resentments, even though I knew I was so grateful that my wife was back, I, these resentments would just whirl around in my head and then they would just shoot out of my mouth. And I'd just bicker. And I guess he finally got tired of this bickering. And he said, okay, that's it. Get a piece of paper. Let's put some hard numbers down and let's figure out uh, some values here. Like, what is her value to you? What is she worth to you? And when he said that, and he looked real serious and everything, I was like, what, what do you mean, what is she worth? He was like, a hard numbers, like value. Like, I know she does, you know, you do this in your family and she does this. You'd have to hire somebody to do that. How much would that cost? Let's, let's put down a number. She provides intimate services, we'll call it. <laughs> How much would that cost? And it, you know, I want some hard numbers. We're going to really figure out the economics of this relationship and what she is worth to you. And he kept saying that. And I, was, I had no answers. He's like, what is she worth to you? Now, this is the best advice when somebody brings it out of your own mouth. And I said, well, she's worth everything. Absolutely everything. Everything I got. Everything I will have. And he was like, he took a deep breath and sat back and goes, I'm really glad we got that settled. And he said, I'm going to remind you, if you ever bring this up again, that we've settled this. She's worth everything. And that's what he did. I only brought it up a few more times. The resentment, you know, picked his little head out. And he goes, I thought we settled this. And, you know, like a little boy that peed his pants, I 
drop my head, she's worth everything. And, you know, it's hard to tell you how much power those words had on me at that time. I used them on everything, not just money, but with, you know, there's so much little things to forgive that happened in the divorce. There's patience. There's there's the time that was given to things. And and I would just ask myself, well, what, what like, really, what is she worth? And it's always the same answer. She's worth everything, everything I got. It fixed the money problem because it just loosened my grip on everything. And suddenly we were able to function and talk about it and figure it out. That's the best advice I ever got. Incredible advice. I still use it to this day. And now to this song here. My camera might die. I hope it doesn't. But I might have to come back. Uh, this song. So I wrote this when me and my wife were engaged. And now I'd been married. I didn't have a lot of high hopes for marriage. In fact, a lot of my songs in the, our engagement are just actual warnings like, don't do this. <laughs> Girl, don't do this. Don't marry this dude. Like, seriously. And, you know, so it's her fault. I warned her. And uh, so this is one that's it may be in that category, but what it is, I, was, I, I just looked at it recently because I started working on it for an album. And I was looking at these words and I'm like, this is like an offer to her of all the stuff I will give her if she will give me this one thing. And it's not what you think. And it's made up, you know, you might not understand all the metaphors in there. I mean, you will on some sense, but to me, they, they're meaningful to us because these were all the little things we were talking about. And, and I think of that in those early days of marriage is you're making all your dreams you're telling each other are your promises. And the problem is, is that we think, I thought, she thought, I actually didn't think that because I didn't have a high view of marriage at the time. I didn't think much good was going to come of it. But she thought for sure that she'd finally arrived. She's already been through all the crisis and the journey to get to this place where she found the man she loves and, and it's all going to happen now. Where these to me are all the promises, but everything has a price tag. And these promises that you you feel and that you make and that you you, you actually are embodying when you get married are going to have a price tag on them. And I hate to say it, it's a cliche, but there's a reason a lot of these cliches are said is there's nothing free. And, you know, that's at least true in the sense that there's nothing free that of value of consequence. Everything has this price tag. And to me, our marriage did have a great price tag. The love that we have now had a great price that was paid for it a greater price than I ever thought I could pay. And, you know, the big, there was the big lump sum payments that were due and were paid, but the hardest one to pay is the everyday price. The everyday suffer me price. I'll suffer you, you suffer me, because we're we're not perfect, you know. I don't care, you know, if you're the Mr. Right, you think you're Mr. Right, you're Mrs. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect. We're all very hard to live with. Believe me. <laughs> uh, and so that's what this song is. is, is, is it's an offer of all the things that I will. And it, what's neat about this is that I, I look at it. even so, It's all flowery and metaphorical in a sense. These were dreams of ours that I believe many of them have been uh, given to each other. And some of them are yet to come. And so I'll let the song kind of speak a little bit. And I'll shut up. So I have to read this one because I just am now learning it again.
up heaven sent to fall and grow your deepest need sunlight cup of tea a moonlit memory a new leaf turning just wait and see now and forever two hearts are Good night. Have a wonderful night. See you next time.